Right. CES 2017. We're still vertical after three days. This is day three at CES 2017. My name is Van. I'm a product trainer here at Sony. And I'm glad that you guys have decided to spend some time here at the Sony booth. Come on over to the camera counter where we're showing off the Alpha 6500, the Alpha 99 Mark II, as well as some nice Cybershot cameras. We're about to do some demonstrations. We're going to actually show, show you a couple demonstrations with the RX100 Mark V first. I'd like to introduce uh, Arson of Imagery, Patrick Murphy Racy. It's great to be here. This is my first ever CES show, so I'm having a lot of fun here. And my feet don't hurt too bad, so it's, it's pretty good. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to demo the RX100 Mark V in HFR mode, which is, stands for high frame rate. And so what the camera's going to do is it's actually going to shoot 240 frames per second in a burst, and then we'll be able to look at the playback and see how it, the camera does. It's very beautiful. So I'm going to first get the camera ready in standby mode, and then our model's going to move really fast. And I'm going to come in and start the capture. There we go. Oh, that's awesome fast. That's great. If you're familiar you. with the RX100 live from Sony, this is our fifth iteration. And what we've added this time is a 315-point um, autofocus, uh, face detect autofocus system, as well as a new front end LSI. Now, the high frame rate recording it's really unique because it can shoot up to 960 frames per second and slow that down as much as 40 times. And here we can look at our video now. We can look up at the monitors on either side and you'll see what 240 frames looks like. It's beautiful. The other thing to take note of is that her face is tack sharp throughout the entire video. Even though I was moving and she's obviously moving very fast. So it's really, really cool to be able to capture a video like this. It's so dramatic. And this is something I do at every wedding I shoot. I make sure I do the first dance with the RX100 Mark V because it's so easy to get such beautiful results. Wow, play it again because it looks so cool. It really does. I'm, I, I'm just mesmerized by <laughs> ultra slow-mo. It's so cool. It is. And I think, you know, super slow motion video looks so awesome because really what it does is it takes a split second in time and it stretches it out so you can really appreciate the, the details of like, you know, the fabric moving, the hair, everything. So it basically allows you to see something that you normally would never be able to see with your naked eyes. That's right. And then on the, in the regular mode, you know, the uh, RX100 is so awesome at shooting 4K video. It shoots full 4K in both 24 and 30p. Um, and I find that the, it's, it's an awesome camera to use. Uh, on a small stabilizer, it's great. You can go around corners. Another thing, I, that's right. Another thing I love about the RX100 Mark V is it's great for vloggers. So if you want to like see yourself, you know you can you can actually shoot yourself very easily if you're doing interviews with somebody or whatever. But my favorite feature of all is the pop-up screen. I mean, I love the EVF that comes out. And even, it's not just the, the 24 to 70 light uh, um, Zeiss lens that is on there, but even, even the optics inside the EVF are also T-Star Carl Zeiss, which makes it for a very, very nice way to work and really see what you're shooting. Yeah, a lot of people think, you know, if it's a bright day outside, it's hard to see the screen, you pop up your viewfinder. But your viewfinder also helps you stabilize the camera against your, your body, so you get less shake. Um, and it's a great thing to have, especially on a little pocket camera like that. Now, we have OLED true finders on pretty much every camera that we have here as well. Right. So, it's a great lens on that um, RX100 Mark V, but if it's not quite long enough for you, 24 to 70 is a little short, we've also got the big brother to it, the RX10 Mark III. That camera is on the right here, um, so definitely Sorry. come over and try that one because it features a 24 to 600 millimeter optical zoom. Now, that lens can literally zoom all the way across this very large Sony booth, so try that one out if you get a chance. We're going to switch gears to a camera that can switch lenses now. Yes. We've got the yes. Alpha 6500. Um, I love this camera, and this is a camera I use almost every day. I'm a sports photographer. I shoot a lot of fast moving things. I do a lot of SEC football games. I do basketball. Um, and to have an 11 frame per second motor drive, there it is. It's very, very fast. Um, yeah. But it's not just the motor drive that's fast. The autofocus is incredibly quick. Yeah, 425 points of autofocus. And it's a face detect autofocus system. By the way, the Alpha 6500 is the world's fastest autofocus in its class. It only takes 0 0.05 seconds, or about 500 of a second, half the time it takes for you to blink for it to acquire focus. 
That's right. And so what we're going well, to do is we're going to do a little thing. This camera also has what's called a, a front end LSI, which is a is Sony speak for a big buffer. It's got a huge buffer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to shoot a couple pictures really quickly. You'll notice that uh, her face has that green box over it. It's got facial recognition, facial recognition autofocus. And it doesn't matter where I put her in the frame. So you're not stuck in the middle anymore like with the DSLRs of, of, that are out there. So here we go, we're gonna shoot some pictures and I'm gonna move while she's moving. And I'm gonna hit the play button and you'll see just how fast the buffer is. So right now you can see up there on the monitor 20, 1918 is how fast it is. I can hit play and I can actually start looking at the images that we just shot almost immediately. So it's a really powerful tool. It's, it's, you know, Sony is all about speed. And perhaps the most important element of the speed that I like is the fact that I can say, oh, I really like this picture. I can hit a button uh, and I can like literally send it to my phone instantly. And then I can put it on, I can push it out to Tumblr, to Facebook, Twitter, whatever I want instantly. So that's a very powerful thing for me as a, as a working pro. Yeah, and that one touch transfer is available on pretty much all Sony cameras that have Wi-Fi and NFC, which is everything we have over here. So let's not forget about um, the cameras down at this end of the counter. We've got the Alpha 99 Mark II. And if you wonder where this is our flagship full frame. May I pick this up? Yeah. <laughs> it's our flagship full frame camera. Uh, it's an A mount camera with a translucent mirror. So what that means is it can have full continuous autofocus with A mount lenses during video as well as stills. And this bad boy here can shoot up to 12 frames per second at a whopping 42 megapixels with JPEG and RAW. And guess what? During that 12 frames per second, auto, tra auto focus tracking and auto exposure tracking at the same time. So if you weren't aware, no other camera, period, has been able to have this type of performance until now. Especially in such a small package, because it's about half the size of a D5, half the size of a 1DX, and half the price as well. Yeah, just listen. Right. That's amazing. At 42 megapixels. So pretty amazing. If you haven't tried it yet, give this one a shot. Pun intended. <laughs> so if you've noticed, uh, we, you, you may be missing the A7 series of full frame mirrorless cameras. They are here at, this, at the Sony booth, but just not at our station. So make your way down into the, uh, the rest of the booth here. At our main stage, we've got Amy and the other artisans that are showing off the A7R Mark II and the A7S Mark II. And I'm here, you know, I'm not a Sony employee, I'm actually a working pro. If you have any questions for me, that's what I'm here for. So please approach and anything goes. Thank you very much and welcome to CES 2017. Thank you for spending your time with us. Are you still connected? So, uh, so let me ask you a couple questions. Sure. So, um, let's, do it let's in the corner take here. the 6500 right here. Yeah. Um, it's a crazy, crazy technology in there, right? It is crazy, and it's um, for me as a as a I shot as a working pro. I worked for Sports Illustrated for about ten years, and for the last nineteen years, I, I was shooting um, you know all Canon EOS. Yeah. And now, I mean, I'm so happy with the ability to use a camera that's this small and lightweight. Um, I find that it extends my my ability to kind of stay energized and stay in a shoot because it's so so small and light. And I'm not giving up any performance at all either. So especially when you consider a D500 to 7D Mark II is going to be a slower camera than this with twice the bulk and weight and for more money. So at $1,300 versus $2,000 for a D500, I just, it's hard for me to understand why anybody would want to do that. Well, you, you were using the Alpha 6300 before? Oh yeah, one of your I've used cameras? all of them. Yeah, the, the A6000 was the, the linchpin camera for me. When As soon as I got that camera in my hands, I realized I'm done carrying all that weight around. I'm that done. That was amazing. Six thousand. Yeah. It was very affordable. It was. It's still very affordable. And, and not only that, it's it's the highest selling <laughs> camera Sony's ever had. The A6000 is still very much relevant, even though it's not here just because we are only showing the most recent cameras. But A6000 continues to be a very successful, very approachable price point. A6300 is still selling great, and now we have A6500. You do mostly photography, right? I do photography and video both, so I'm on both sides. I'm capturing 4K with Ronin uh, on the, you know, I'm using A6500 a lot. I'm actually doing Atomos capture and using ProRes. I mean, it's just incredible that you could have a camera this size, this small, and especially at this price point where it's so relevant and useful to me as a pro. 
so the 6300 introduced uh, 4K. Yes. But now there's image stabilization. What does that mean? In the body. So basically, inside this, inside this body, it means that I can take any lens, as long as it's got an adapter. So I can use a lens that was made by Nikon in 1950, and I can put it on this camera, and I can get stabilized video with it. It's, it's phenomenal. Also, uh, with the Sony glass, which is what I mostly use, if I combine this with like a Ronin M, my ability to get huge production quality is, is like off the charts because I can be dead solid going around corners through doorways, going upstairs. It's just a huge advantage for me. So uh, how would you uh, rate this stabilization system? Is it like a Steadicam? Yeah, one of the things I did as a pro, I wanted to know is it better in the lens or is it better in the body? And I did a lot of testing early on with a bunch of different lenses and it's absolutely definitely the best in the body. It also makes it lighter weight because you don't, if you don't have to buy lenses with image stabilization, you're saving money and weight there as well. But with the Sony lens, does it double uh, stabilize? Does it stabilize even more than just the you body? Get, you get five axis stabilization with any Sony lens and you get three axis with any other lens. So do you, you could just run after people and it just looks like a steady cam really. Yeah, and, and when you combine that with the steady shot, which is the electronic uh, steady part of the camera, if you could go with that, if you shoot an active steady shot with the in-body stabilization, it is remarkable. You can go down a flight of stairs and it's still smooth. And now it has a touchscreen. Many people was, were asking yeah. for the touchscreen. Yep. Are yeah, you, you using can, that a lot? You know, I really don't. I'm a left eye shooter. <laughs> And my nose is always getting on the screen, so I don't really use it that much. But I have a couple friends of mine who say it's a real game changer for them. For video, you want to touch on where you focus. Yeah, right? I don't pretty much because the auto, the 4D autofocus system in all the Sony products is so good that usually it's going to do a better job for me than I would do myself. And so I prefer to allow the camera to focus for me. Then I can work on just content, moments, and good quotes. So the, the camera just knows what's important? Well, if I engage facial, facial uh, recognition autofocus in wide area, yeah. I mean, it's going to do a way better job than I could even do with my finger. Sports Illustrated, is that one of the famous American magazines? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the most famous sport magazine in the English-speaking world, I think. So it's like a lot of content you've been making with Sony cameras. Yeah, yeah. And uh, people just think it's amazing, like it just looks awesome. You know, at first people are a little put off by the Sony when they see me on the sidelines with the Sony, they think, geez, what are you doing? Um, but I think that... I think that once the pub images are published, they go, oh, okay, well, wow, that's that's pretty Just cool. that size. That's, yeah. that, that's the issue. It's a little bit too small to look professional, no? You know, I don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm more worried about my pictures looking good than what, what gear I have. And actually, I find great advantage of having a small camera because it allows me much closer access in photojournalism. There's sort of a natural bubble people have about what, what they're willing to, how close they're let, willing to let you get. And with a camera this size, it looks like a point and shoot. And so I can get really, really close to people that I don't know and really do better documentary work. So do you think uh, people can easily go take this camera and do a feature film? Yes. That's good. That, I should, do. that should be yeah. totally possible, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And it's going to look uh, awesome? It's yeah. It's going to look like a Well, the other thing is, film? look at it this way. Most people that really work in motion pictures, they shoot Super 35. That is their primary thing. This is a Super 35 camera. It's its native state. So yeah, it's a great way. And also, especially even with all the aftermarket lenses coming out of Sigma and Tamron, you've got so many options for glass. It's, uh, it's a really easy, fun, nice way to work. How would you define uh, the Sony look? Uh, is there a look? Is, think, it, does it, does it, is it possible to recognize that it's I, a Sony? I would say yes. I think Sony has a look that is very calm. It's very neutral. A lot of this is because of their relationship with Zeiss. And one of the greatest advantages of the Sony system is that the color's not all whacked out. You know, like when I shot Canon, I was always pulling red and yellow and orange out of my, my photography and out of my video because it was always turn people into hamburger. This is a very neutral thing, and you really want neutral when you're going to be grading in, in a very serious way in your, 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 your videotape. You session. always do grading? Yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. Everything is, has to be graded? Plus the ability to use S-Log2 and S-Log3 now in all of these cameras. I mean, it's insane. A, a $995 point-and-shoot from Sony still has S-Log2 and 3. 
it's just like it's unbelievable. And the small one there doesn't have a microphone external input, but otherwise it does pretty much lots you know, of the same stuff. I tell you what I'm doing with the uh, RX100. It's a great documentary camera because it's so itty bitty and small. I'm now using the Tascam. Uh, t uh, I think it's called the DR10L which is a really nice little miniature lavalier with a tiny itty bitty uh, digital recorder. It's not a, it's not transmitting anything, but I can pair the audio with it later. And so I'm still getting pro audio with an RX 105, which is a really neat way to work. I can have one pocket full of everything I need to do real, real uh, photojournalism and video. And pairing the audio is easy. It is. I mean, especially with Adobe Premiere Pro CC. you have CC. to sit and uh, sync it up or it's automatic kind of? Um, Adobe, I use Adobe Premiere uh, Pro, and in the CC version, it's got an automatic audio sync, so I don't even have to think about it. I can just boop, and the footage goes, and it's done. It's, can, it has the internal mic, so yeah. it knows exactly. how to sync. Exactly. All right, and you can even have multiple mics. You can, actually. Yeah, yeah sure. So that's a very compact way to do it. I'm very excited about doing real like documentary work. How does I think, it compare to quality of a video on this compared to that? Well. It's, uh, this is a one inch sensor versus an APS-C. So first of all and foremost, you're not gonna have the low light ability of the larger sensor because you don't have as many pixels grabbing light. But I find this camera is really, really good up to about 1250 to 1600 ISO in video in 4K. Um, but when you wanna use this thing, like I, I bolted this thing on a roller coaster not long ago because it's so tiny, it's a great POV camera as well. And uh, when you take all these uh, professional pictures, do you like to have bokeh effects all the time? I shoot a lot do? wide open. It's funny, the guys in the back just clean my camera. I have an A6500 in back of my own, and uh, they found all this stuff all over the sensor because I'm, I'm working all the time. And they said, we can't believe you can't see this. And I'm like, well, I shoot at 1.4 all the time, and one, you know, 1.0 and F2, so I don't really, it's kind of funny, but yeah. All right.